All right, so let's get started. Ruby blocks and closure. So what we are going to cover include uh, basically the most important aspects in this presentation is the concept of block. So we'll talk. We'll take a look at what a block is in Ruby language, and we're going to see how to create a block, and we'll also see how block can be passed around as an object. And then we're going to actually see some uh, the extra features of Ruby language like a proc, ampersand, lambda, and closure. But uh, as long as you understand the concept of blocks here, uh, you know that's the most important aspect I want you to actually take from this presentation and uh, uh, this topic. All right. So what is a block? Uh, you know, sometimes I call a block as a code block because it's actually a chunk of code. Block is basically chunk of code that contains uh, some code, and you can call it nameless. You can also think of it as a nameless function or nameless method. So it's a chunk of code. Now you can pass a block to another function. By the way, you know when I call another fun another function, I can call this one as a target function. The target function can receive a block just like an argument. Um, and then once the target function receives the block, target block can execute that passed block. Okay. So this is an example. Uh, you know this is the array class. Array class has each method, and then each method can receive this code block. Okay, so this is in this case is each is a target function that receive this block, and then inside the each uh, target function, it will execute this code. Okay, all right. So how does a block look like? You already have, you already have seen an example of it. So you can actually. Uh, create a block in two different forms. One is using a brace like this or you can use a do and end. Uh, the convention is if you have a one-line block meaning you have only one line code then you want to use this brace. If you do have a multiple uh, lines in your code then you want to use do and end. Okay? If you want to have a multiple statement then you can have semicolon and then put another statement in the same line but in that case you might want to use a do and end because that's more uh, a convention okay so if you have a multiple lines use do and end okay how does a block get passed and executed So when a method is invoked, meaning a target function is invoked, a block can be passed as an argument. Sometimes you call a block is attached to that target function. So as I said before, you can think of that block as like a special argument to the method. Okay? And it is actually at the end uh, of the method invocation. Now, as I said before, the target function will execute the passed in block, right? And how does uh, the uh, past? Uh, how does the uh, target function uh, the execute the uh, past block? The way it can execute is by calling yield method. Okay. So every class, you know, you can think of my class is the extension of object class, right? So object class has yield method. So yield method will actually execute the past in block. Okay. By the way. Uh, the uh, you know this yield is the same thing as yield with the parenthesis because there is you know in in Ruby you don't have to have a parenthesis something we learned last week right so this is the same thing as this so suppose we create this my class and then it it does define a command method okay so this is a target method that can receive a block and uh, it can actually call yield in any place it wants to execute that code block that was passed in okay. So here we created a class object. We created a my class object, okay, my class new, and then m is pointing to an object instance of uh, my class class, okay, and then you can call this command method, okay. So you're gonna call the command method, and then you are passing a block, okay. So in this case, the block contains a very simple uh, one 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 statement, uh, printing out hello world, okay. So basically, when you call this one, it will it will display hello world when this yield method is executed. 
Okay, all right. Uh, because this uh, block concept is important, I'm going to actually take a look at if you have any questions. You know, feel free to ask questions on each of the slides uh, as far as a blog is concerned. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a look at the uh, if you guys have any questions. So feel free to ask que questions right now. Okay, now how does a block receive argument? In the example here, the block. D uh, doesn't have any argument itself. Okay? However, block can receive an argument because it's a nameless function. Okay? So this is an example we are creating. So uh, well, you know, this is a uh, this is the way that you can uh, define a block which receive an argument. Okay? So it's basically receiving a single argument and it will be represented as x and then you can use that x in your code. Okay? All right, so it's you know this code is exactly pre pretty much the same as previous code. However, now we are passing this code block that has an argument. Okay, so this when the yield is executed in the target function, target function can actually pass an argument, the value of and you know of an argument in this case current time. So this current time will be passed as an x. Okay, so when this method is invoked, what happens is, you know, when this yield time now is executed, it will display current time and the time. Okay, all right, the questions. What if you pass two brackets to a function? Uh, so you're talking about nested case, right? So we'll take a look at the nest case in a few minutes when you do the hands-on lab. Okay. Uh, oh, I said you're talking about passing two blocks to a function. No, you cannot pass the two blocks. You pass a single block. Okay, if you try to pass a two block, that is uh, compiled at the syntax error. Okay, all right. So let's see other questions. And uh, so if you have to create a class which can execute a block, then you have to add to yield exactly. So you're going to call yield at the location that you want to invoke that passed in block. Okay, all right. Next question from Andrea. Hi, how can I pass more than one block to a target function? Again, you don't pass more than one block. You want to actually pass a single block to a target function. Okay, uh, I think that Ron has the same question. Okay, so now the last question is Mas, uh, the Mansi, Manasi. Sorry, can I uh, can a block return variables? Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, the, uh, when we actually see in hands on that. Okay. All right, any other questions so far? So this block is probably the most important aspect in this presentation, so I'm actually you know, spending more time digesting this block concept before we move on to you know, kind of semi-important concepts like a props and closure. Uh, question from Laksimi. Can a class have a multiple yield? Yes. Okay, good question. All right, any other questions? Yeah, so you can call yield in any place you want and uh, any number of times you want, okay? All right, moving forward. So this is an example of block receive argument. So this is an example we have seen already. So as I said before, when you are actually seeing this code, so this is array class, right? Uh, array class object. And as I said before, array class has each method. So each method is a target function and it's receiving a block, taking a single argument, right? So basically what happens is that inside each, it will yield, meaning it will uh, invoke this block. In fact, multiple times passing an argument of each one by one, okay? So this is the same thing as this. Uh, this one is using brace and this one is using do end. Okay, so when you see this code, you can think of it, this one, as a block. Okay, so as I said before, you can use either brace or do block, a do end to create a block. Okay, uh, let's see, question from, uh, uh, Ron, yeah, I don't think, uh, okay, so yeah, why don't you actually finish up your question, because um, it's not complete. All right, so let's move on. Yeah, so multiple arguments. So we have created uh, a block that receives a single argument in this case, right? It's receiving a single argument, but obviously you can receive a multiple arguments uh, in your block, okay, by having uh, a notation like this. 
So here we are passing a block that is receiving two arguments. Okay, so arg1 and arg2, and in your code you can use those arguments in any way you want. In this case, we are just displaying those two arguments that are passed in. So when you call yield, now you can pass uh, these two arguments. So in this case, if I pass 1000 and sanction and current time is in current time now, and then it will basically display like this. 1000 and sanction and current time is something. Okay, so you can pass, you can have uh, the multiple arguments. Okay, all right. Question so far. Alright, so let's do the hands-on lab. Yeah, so we'll have a much better understanding uh, the, uh, with the hands-on lab. And let me just take a look at the uh, lab documentation and we'll go one by one. Okay, so we'll try Ruby blocks with the two formats. As you can see, you know, we can actually use, so I'm going to just use this one. This is two formats. Two format. Okay, so let's run this guy. Okay, so basically it will display the values of uh, uh, the. Uh, so let's see the code here. So we are receiving, uh, we are passing a block uh, that is uh, that 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 receive a single argument n. And then we are just displaying the value of it, and then we are displaying uh, the uh, the uh, multiplication of you know the n times n, okay? And uh, we are basically again each is a target function inside each. It will call this target function passing each of this uh, the uh, item in the array, okay? So that's the reason we receive one 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 and one one two four three nine, okay? Okay. Uh, and uh, this is the same thing as uh, as uh, as this. Okay, so in this case we use the do and end. So if you if you want to actually have in a single line, you have to use this semicolon. But this is a more of a con convention because we have a two lines in the block. Okay, okay, so that is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can certainly uh, take a look at documentation of each. And uh, this is a case that we are creating a class. So in this case, each is a target function in which this is a built-in function of array class, right? So inside the each uh, method, you can see is yielding uh, the uh, this code block passing each of these items. Now in this case, we are going to create our own class uh, called my class. Okay, so let's see that code. That's the code. So this is a code. We have defined my class, okay, and it defined a single method called called command, right? And then it's yielding here, okay. And before that, we have another statement like this, and then we create an object instance of my class. And then we are calling command method, and then we are passing a uh, very simple a uh, block. Okay, so this block of code will be executed uh, when I invoke command because inside the command uh, method, yield is invoked. Okay, so let's run this one first of all. Okay, so as expected, you know we we uh, you know we 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 get things the uh, the uh, executed correctly. So let's just. Uh, Okay, so you know we expect the uh, hello world is being displayed. So if you see go over here, yeah, hello world is displayed, and uh, then life is good. I mean, so then we actually passing uh, another block. Uh, so we see life is good. Okay, and here uh, this is a case that we are having a nested uh, block being passed. So here we are passing this block to command. So this block, meaning this code will be executed here when yield is invoked. So yield will execute this code. And this code 
is basically each statement which contains its own block. Okay, and uh, this code is the same thing as this, right? Okay, so here we are basically using a single line brace notation. Here we are basically using uh, the uh, the uh, in this case uh, three line uh, the code. Okay, so here uh, you know you can see uh, it's displaying number one to three, number one to three as an array. Okay, all right. Okay, so you know I think there were a couple of questions whether it's possible to pass multiple blocks, right? Uh, you know, so if that's the case, you might want to think about how you can pass as a nested block like this. Okay. All right. I'm gonna actually see if there are any questions. All right. So question from Laksimi. So let me see. Uh, is the block treated as as a thread so that it's run when there is the yield uh, you know is that that's the implementation detail I mean you know all you care is that when that block is being ex you know when block is passed it will be executed inside the target function okay so it's highly likely is in the same thread of the method okay it's being executed question from Ron can I define a block and assign it to a variable and then pass that variable to a function Absolutely. So we are going to actually see how we can do that later on in the proc and, and ampersand and things like that. So uh, the uh, the uh, hold on tight. Okay. So we'll get to that. Question from Andrea: uh, The uh, is the yield function called by default in every method, like in arrays each method? Uh, no. I mean, you know, the target function does not have yield. Does not have to have yield method, right? So in this case, uh, if you know the uh, if in this case. Uh, if I comment out this code, you know, let's comment out and save the change in B, and then nothing happens. Okay, so you don't have to call ill, but uh, the uh, the uh, you know, uh, yeah, so you don't have to call ill. Okay, but when the pa you know when you actually have a target method that is actually being the, the when it, it is being passed with the uh, the code block, then you know obviously you it's highly likely that you have a yield uh, method, okay, in the target function to 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 invoke that uh, calling. Okay, so all right, let me see what other questions we have. Uh, let's see. A uh, question from Steve. So, if no yield is there, called the block passed in is just ignored. Yeah, I think I just to show you that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Excellent. Any other questions so far? All right. So let's move on. Okay, so we just saw that, and you can certainly take a look at the uh, yield uh, documentation. So we have seen that. Uh, okay, so we are now taking a look at a case where a block can receive argument. Okay, so here we define two methods in my class. So one is uh, command one. And uh, the other one is command two, okay. And uh, command one doesn't receive any argument of its own, okay. But when it's yielding, meaning when it's calling passed in function, it's passing an argument to the called in function. Same thing for command line two, command two, okay. This is actually passing in this case. Uh, you know, it's basically uh, receive an argument and then it's actually using it to uh, as an argument to the called in block, okay. All right, so now, oh, so let's actually, I'm going to just use the uh, this one, yield with parameters. Parameters. This one. Okay. All right, so let's run this code. Okay, so what we have seen is, uh, you know, we defined a two uh, method in the uh, my class, okay? And then we create an object instance of my class, okay. And then we are calling command one by passing a block that can receive an uh, that receive an argument x, okay. So when we call this one, uh, the 
to the X. When this code block is being executed through yield, yield is passing time now as an argument to the code block. So that is basically an X here. So it will display current time is something, and that is this. Right? Okay. Now, uh, here, uh, command line 2. So command line 2 has its own, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, the argument, my parameter. So it's actually passing 1. Uh, and uh, the, co the, the code block has, uh, has its own argument, x. Okay? So it's basically, uh, hello world is called with x number of times. Okay? So basically, it uses, uh, in this case, 1 as an argument to the code block. So it will just display this. Hello world is called number 1 because, you know, okay? And this one is uh, the, uh, the uh, by the way, the name of this argument can be anything, you know, it just happened to be a name of an argument, okay? So here is pretty much the same code. Uh, this time it's actually passing 2, and that value 2 will be used as an argument to the code block when yield is invoked. So it's going to, dis it's going to display uh, number 2 is passed. So that's what we see here, okay? Same thing with here, number 3 is passed, okay? Uh, if you're passing a string value, something 1, okay, uh, here, and uh, that something 1 will be used uh, as an argument, so it's going to just display something 1, and that's what you see here, and the same thing here, something 2, okay? All right, so let's see if you guys have any questions. Question from Bashimi. Does the array class method each has its own yield? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, each, inside each method, okay, it will call yield, okay, uh, meaning it will invoke the passed in block, okay, uh, and the argument is going to actually pass to it is going to be one item of that array, okay, so that's how each method of array class is implemented, okay, and that, you know, for the matter, each method of any other uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, typical classes that has each method is implemented. Any other questions? Okay, so let's move on. Uh, now, how to pass parameters to a block? Uh, so here, yeah, so this is the, uh, you know, same case. Okay, so in this case, we have a multiple parameters, right? So again, that's something that we have seen in the code. Let's actually do open uh, the uh, field. So this is the code. Uh, here we define a test method, test yield method, and then we are passing a block that we see two arguments, arg1 and arg2. Okay. So when yield method is uh, being invoked, okay. So we are basically calling test yield method, and inside the test yield method is just calling uh, the code block uh, that was passed in, passing two arguments. Okay. So you know, let's run this code. And as expected, uh, it display uh, 1,000 sanction, and then this time current time something. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that is the most important aspects of uh, the uh, Ruby on Rails uh, in terms of block. And uh, from the rest of it is kind of less important. Okay. But uh, let's actually get into those things as well. Prog object. So what is a prog object? Uh, prog object, sometimes called a prox, a 